How's it going guys? Welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the vlog. If you're new to the channel, a big warm welcome. My name is Tristan Mortlock, this is Captain's Vlog. Um, it's a time of the month now where we have to do our monthly um, inspections as part of our safety management system. So today I'm going to give you a little bit of an insight of the things that I have to inspect in regards to the LSA, which is the life saving appliances and the firefighting equipment. I won't be going through everything for you guys, it's gonna take a long, long time, so it'll be like a two hour long video. So I'll do things like the life rafts, life jackets, the immersion suits, the flares, and uh, give you a little bit of an understanding of the safety equipment that we carry on board. So I really hope you guys enjoy this video. Right, so we're on the sun deck, and the <clears throat> first thing we're inspecting here are the life rafts. We've got four life rafts, two on starboard side and two on port side. So I go through the checklist here, which is part of our monthly inspections for the LSA being the life-saving appliances and our firefighting equipment. It's a 13-page um, checklist, which we have to do um, for each month a year, so 12 times a year. And so, as we here, you can see here, we've got the life raft. So what I need to inspect is the general condition of the hydrostatic release. Now, what a hydrostatic release does is, say the boat was to sink and... Um, we were unable to launch the life rafts manually is inside here is a spring loaded blade which activates under water pressure so when a, when a boat goes under by 1.5 to say 4 meters there's a spring loaded blade which when it fills up with water it activates a membrane and then has a blade inside here which then cuts this line releasing the the life raft these get replaced every two years and as you can see on top here it has the wheel mark which means it's SOLAS approved okay on here this is the painter which is connected to the to the life raft so then you pull this painter out you keep pulling out this will then release the raft and activate it and inflate it this painter needs to be connected to what was called as the weak point of the hydrostatic release unit which is this red point here so the reason it's, it's connected to the weak point is because it needs to be activated um, automatically uh, so when the boat is sinking the pressure from the inflated raft will break away the painter on the weak point so it doesn't go under with the boat. Here we have the manual release, this um, orange cord here, so we pull this that will release the life raft automatically. Now what we have to do, these life rafts get inspected annually and they get certified annually. And then you can see when the, in this case, we were done in January, 2019. So the next inspection is due in um, January, 2020. Okay. Um, the other information that you will have on the, <clears throat> on the life raft here is, you can see this is an APAC life raft, which includes food and water. Um, the painter 28 meters in length and the maximum launching height is 18 meters. All the different types of approval, uh, deep sea, Mediterranean approved. We are ARENA, so it's, so it's, cl it's classified by ARENA as well. And you can see here, it tells us the expiration date, which is 2020. So what you're gonna do when we're doing these monthly inspections, you're doing this basically a visual inspection of the general condition of the raft of the hydrostatic release units. Make sure the areas are all clear, so there's nothing being stuffed or blocking the exit of the raft in case of an emergency. And also there's gotta be signage as well. Make sure the signage is clear. As you can see here, we've got life raft and life raft. So both these ones are good. You can see they're in date, valid until 2021. And this one is from May. So they got, these were replaced um, this, earlier this month. So whilst we're on the sun deck here, we're also going to check the other equipment such as the immersion suits, we're going to check the e -perp. and in here in the Bosa's locker we have a fire extinguisher. Let's grab that out of here. So this one is a dry powder extinguisher, two kilo. So what we're checking for is a general condition of the extinguisher. You're making sure that the pressure gauge is on green. You can see it is. And every time, every now and then, what you want to do, especially with powder extinguisher, is give it a good shake. Because it, it tends to settle at the bottom. So give it a good shake. And then what we do is then put it back into its cradle. And then tie it up. Uh, Jason's slacking, having a nice jacuzzi in the morning. Should be working. Nice and clean. 
<laughs> right, current port side. We got the EPUB here. Now the EPUB is also on a hydrostatic release unit, so we want to open this cover up and inspect the EPUB and do the test as well and do a visual inspection of the EPUB and the hydrostatic release. So what we do, we pull this pin out, this slots out. This is the EPUB. Now an EPUB, what it is, what it stands for is emergency position indicating radio beacon. So this sends an emergency GPS um, coordinates to a coastal station we got the test. So you'll see though, when we are performing the test, um, we got to do it only within the first five minutes of each hour. So the time now is 10 to 9. So we've got to wait uh, 10 minutes before we can, so wait 10 minutes before we can uh, do the test. So while we're waiting till ni um, 9 o'clock, we're going to inspect the hydrostatic release here. Uh, the dates we've got on here is April uh, ba, 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 2021. So this is also brand new from, from this year, from last month in fact. You want to inspect the general condition of the of the casing. With the EPUB itself, again, a general condition. You've got a painter here as well. Normally when you're in the life raft, this painter be connected to the life raft and the EPUB will be in the water to get the best possible GPS um, signal. So we'll wait 10 minutes before we activate the test. On this, I should leave it out up here. What I can do in the meantime, as we already inspected the fire extinguisher, we can tick that off. So the life rafts are being ticked off, and then we're going to check the um, two kilo powder in the sun deck boson locker. Correct. Okay, next we're going to do is the immersion suits. Right guys, so here we have one of the immersion suits. Um, so the way in the emergency you want to release this and get this open is loosen this up. You basically grab the bottom, pull it out like that, open it up. So. This is actually, <clears throat> this is a brand new one that we just received. So I'm gonna test it for the first time. Shoes off, and we wanna do, when you're putting a, um, <coughs> an immersion suit on, <clears throat> is always put it on when you're sitting down on the deck. Don't be standing, because the boat will be moving around and you can fall over and hurt yourself. Go, and up, sit inside. <laughs> Jason's gonna grab another one and do it with me. No, I'm not. <laughs> Always insane. I hope you're a bit quicker than this in an emergency. Do it slowly for the viewers. But on. Hats up, glasses off. You always want to put it right up on top. Quite warm actually today. Not the hair. Huh? Not the hair. Not the hair. All the way up. And there we have it. And then we put our life jackets on and into the into the life rafts. Here. Goes around. And away we go. Good. That's just how we put on an immersion suit. When your feet go at the bottom, you've got soles which are grippy, so you're not slipping on the deck while, you, uh, while you're moving around. This one particularly designed for weight ranges 50 to 150 kgs, a height of 170 to 190. And that's a Immersion suit, you can see you've got the reflective tape as well. This is the mouthpiece that goes around. Reflective tape here on the arms. We've got the wheel mark here, which is at Solas. Put it on the back. More reflective tape on the top end of the back there. And that is an immersion suit. 
Okay, so it's now exactly 9 a.m. So what we're gonna do is the test on the EPUB. So as previously mentioned, uh, when you're testing these, uh, you want them to do them always a test within the first five minutes of each hour. So I've got the switch over here. So I'm gonna switch it over. I'm gonna hold it over there uh, for 15 seconds and I should get one flash. And the one flash tells me that it's okay. So let's try it. There it is, there's the flash. Ooh, so, there it is. Test is good, positive, and operational. So this thing can will save lives. <clears throat> right, so that concludes all the tests and checks now here on the sun deck. We're gonna make our way to the bridge deck to do the test of the safe equipment we've got there and uh, the barbecue and the gas that we stow. So we're now on the bridge deck, just going to test all the safe equipment we've got here for the barbecue. Um, so the first thing's first thing is to take off, unclip the um, fire blanket. and put this down so you guys can see. So this is the fire blanket here basically. Uh, it's basically to smother the fire, so basically pull this down, the blanket comes out. And then make sure that you approach it, you cover your hands like this, and you're over the fire, and you literally, like I'm going to do over you guys, and you smother the fire, and you keep the blanket on, you don't then take it off until a long period of time, and you've done all the temperature tests. So this is in good condition as you can see, there's no signs of mold, dirt, contamination. Uh, you can still feel, I can still feel that waxiness, which is the fire retardant. So yeah, this is in generally very good condition. So now it's going to fold this back up and put it back in its box and then we can continue. So what we're going to do, part of the checklist as well, is do a general visual inspection of the barbecue itself. And make sure there's no bit of like dust and grease, which can be flammable. So we're going to open it up and see it's in a very, very clean it's been absolutely completely detailed there's no grease whatsoever it's actually a little bit dusty but there's no grease whatsoever that's clean and underneath what i'm expecting here is the hoses to make sure there's no signs of corrosion coming to contamination this again is just a little bit of dust it's absolutely fine this in general the connection here is in a good condition as well all the connections you can see up here all in good condition no sign of um, corrosion or rust the gas, gas bottles are correctly stowed, they've got their lids on um, and they stow safely. Whenever we stop not using the barbecue, we always take this off just as an extra safety precaution. And so this is generally good, okay? So, and then moving on, the other thing we've got to check in here, as you can see, this is for the FM200. Now the FM200 is a type of fire suppression system. Um, for the emergency generator. So if in the emergency generator compartment there's a fire, um, I can pull this pin here, pull the release, and it will deploy the FM200 extinguishing the fire. So what I'm checking for here, you can see we've got the green light here, which means it's charged and ready to go, okay? If it's red, then we have a problem. So we've got to check that, make sure that's always on, on green. So this is in general good condition. We had this surveyed with the rest of our fire extinguishers earlier this year. It's also an annual inspection. We need to get a certificate. The certificate that get, then gets sent to flag and to class for approval. And then we get the annual stamp, part of our safety procedures and safety equipment. Right, so we're going to continue the tour. We've got Barbarak over there doing the accounts. Ciao, Barbarak. Hello. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the vlog. <laughs> Um, so as part of the monthly inspections, we need to inspect also the um, flares which are left under the wheelhouse, under, right under here. Um, there is a container, it's a waterproof container and uh, we take these as part of our van and ship drills. And so basically this is unscrews and inside we're going to find some handheld flares. This is a parachute flare. These are the handheld flares, and for the day, we've got two smokes as well. So what we're looking for when we're inspecting these are the dates, the expiry dates, which are written along here. So in this case, this one's expiring in June 2020, so this still got another year of life. The handhelds, uh, this one's expiring in February 2020, so after the season, these will need to be replaced. And the smokes are expiring on the, here we go, also February 2020. 
Now, the thing with the parachute flares, if you ever are caught in a, in a situation when you're abandoning ship, is if there is a uh, helicopter in the vicinity, a rescue helicopter, do not shoot parachute flare because they will be gone, okay? Because that can be very dangerous for a rescue helicopter. The other thing, when you're shooting it, you're gonna keep your arm, arm nice and straight, kind of cover your face, and try and keep, hold it, you know, almost at the end so you don't burn your hands. The handheld flares are the same. You wanna hold it quite far away because it gets very, very hot to protect yourself. If you can wear protective gloves, it's probably better, but not, not necessary. And then the smoke, so you gotta be very careful in a life raft to make sure you release it so it goes downwind. What you don't wanna do is have it upwind and then all the smoke goes over you and over the life raft to so make sure you launch these downwind as well. So these dates are all good. Gonna inspect the rest of them now. Um, real quick, make sure they're all in date. smokes as well okay so you can see it was watertight inside of the lids in here we've got a o-ring a rubber o-ring so when you close it it makes it completely watertight so if it gets put in the water because we have to abandon ship the flares aren't going to get uh, damaged or destroyed from the water from the water damage okay and here we have the life thrower which is also a rocket with this general inspection of general condition. Um, we are check, we're checking the date of expiry. These ones got replaced, the rockets were replaced this year. I'm just gonna open it up here to show you guys inside. So you can see with the line in here, this is the rocket that projects um, the line. Uh, I'm not sure what the distance is actually on these things, but uh, a long, long way. Uh, this can be used in case you wanna pass a tow line in heavy seas. Probably two of these on board. There we go. And these are also uh, stowed under the wheelhouse. And then the way we know that is because, as you can see, we've got the sign and ship, the line throwing, we've got life jackets, the um, flares, and we've got a powder one kilo fire extinguisher there as well. And so carrying on, the other thing we have to inspect is the SART, which is the search and rescue transponder. Now, SART gets activated by a radar pulse. Put that up there again. This is a SART, it gets activated by an X-band radar pulse. So on your radar screen, if one of these has been um, turned on, you'll get a number, like 12 dots. And as you get closer, it then becomes 12 lines. And then you basically go towards the direction to find the, um, find the casualty and hopefully bring them on board safely and rescue them. So what we have here is one of our, our life jackets. These are so that's approved 275. What I want to do is open it up so you guys can see uh, what's inside. Okay. So you take here. We've got a zip down here. Unzip it all. Bottom. Unwrap it all. There's the spray hood. Yeah. There's the lights, it goes up there. Okay, and then we have the pipe for topping up the air, your whistle for attracting, attracting attention. We've got the reflecting tape. You can see, you've got this, I don't know if you can see from where you're watching, but you've got the solar stamp on the reflective tape as well. And then on the other side, so because this is SOLAS approved, it needs two canisters. So these are separate. The, the two sides are separate, so they're sealed. So if one side wants to punch or to be damaged, you can still float on, on the other side. So I've got one canister here, okay? These life, wrap, these life jackets also get um, tested annually. And I've got another one also on, on this side. And this thing stays alive. And then we've got the spray hood. So basically, once the life jacket is on, you cover this, you put this over your head so you're not getting lots of um, sea spray in your face and prevent from having swallowing seawater and that horrible, horrible stuff, okay?